Okay, so my, I, I'm going first as a topic, and my topic is about how to select motors uh, for doing things. Uh, it seems like every year or two, or almost every year, we have to climb, right? And there's always a great question of, well, how big of a motor should I use, and how did I pick one? And a lot of teams just kind of go, I'm using the biggest possible motor I can find, and it should work. Or, or they'll say, well, we only got like two pounds left. We're going to have to use a Bainbot motor, a little, little tiny guy. And a lot of people don't spend a lot of time learning about how to select a good motor. So that's what I want to go through today. And um, so our challenge is to lift a robot. And we see this all the time at the end game, right? Um, so in, in my hypothetical scenario, we, we got to lift this robot 24 inches off the ground. Um, and there's a time limit, right? Because we always have the end game. You have to do it in a certain amount of time. The, the robot in my scenario is going to weigh 20 pounds. But it turns out you can plug these numbers in however you want. Does that make sense? So when you, when you go to select a motor, uh, a lot of people just sort of like go to Animark and say, that looks like an awesome one, or they heard about a SIM motor or a Redline or a VEX 775 or whatever, but don't do a whole lot of research into what that actually means. So I'm going to, for all of you FRC people, I'm not going to use one of those motors. Um, uh, I'm going to pick a new one. When you're, when you're picking a motor on how to do this, um, there are uh, four really important numbers that you're watching for. And I'm going to go sh show you how to shop for these things. But the two big ones are the stall torque and the max power, uh, peak power, okay? And you find these on, motor she on, on spec sheets for motors. And they're really, really common terms. Um, just because not everybody know knows, let's talk about the, what these things are first. Uh, torque. Um, torque is a measurement of twist, how hard you're turning. And uh, thank heavens to whoever the, it was who came up with torque. Um, they based it on something rational rather than calling it a Smeagol and just having a magical number. They actually related it to something that is useful and repeatable. And so uh, torque is measured in, um, in a, a weight and a distance. Um, so uh, this motor, for example, hypothetically has 100 ounce inches of torque. And what that means is that if I was to hang a, if I was to, uh, hang a 100 ounce weight on a pulley an inch away from the motor, that is 100 ounce inches. Make sense? And so it's nice because it's a nice linear relationship to it because I think 100 ounce inches is also a pulley that's 10 inches in diameter hanging 10 ounces, right? So you can actually, using the same amount of twist, move something close or far away, and the, the relationship is linear and, and very easy to calculate. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Um, stall torque is, um, stall torque is the torque by which the motor can no longer move your thing. It is its maximum. It is, it's, it's as pulling as hard as it can to keep that, that thing at one inch or, 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 or that, that thing from moving, right? So uh, stall torque is, uh, is actually not useful for most things, and you'll see that in a sec, okay? The other thing that, that, that we need to, okay, so here is a spec sheet for a motor. Now, um, it turns out that there is not a standard for these. They often, whoop, I need to go back. Hang on one sec. I hit the wrong button. Shame on me. Where's my mouse? And go backwards. There we go. Right click, pointer option, laser pointer thing. All right. So <laughs> this is an atrocious graph. It's trying to graph four different numbers and uh, against a fifth axis. So, uh, but all, all of the uh, motor curves look like this. They're ugly. If you know how to read one, it's got a huge amount of useful information. So uh, the yellow line is the torque. Um, well, actually, let, let me start with the, the, uh, the, the X axis down here is the, the speed of the, of the motor. So if, if nothing is connected to it, it runs at 18,730 RPMs, right? It's really cooking. Um, so this is a motor without a gear head on it. And so that is sort of the uh, max speed. Remember, that was one of the parameters. The, the, the max speed is a good place to start. Um, and uh, you can see as uh, this, this yellow line is the torque. And that's how much, how much oomph it's going to give you. And you can see that you know, as you start 
increasing the torque as you start putting a load on the motor. The, uh, if you're reading along the x-axis, the motor is starting to slow down like you'd expect, right? And, the, and But the motor is starting to really crank and, and push hard. And it gets all the way up to here where stall torque, you're going zero speed, right? But you're giving it, it's giving you its maximum amount of power. The other thing you want to look at on this thing to, to realize that that isn't actually a good thing is this, uh, this dotted line is called the current. And that is uh, how much battery it's using. And you can see as, as you're getting closer to stalling out, you're draining your battery in a big hurry. So that is something also to, to look into and to keep in mind is that when you're looking at these curves, uh, um, uh, you, you don't want to burn your battery up, right? How many doing so far? So far so good? Questions? All right. So there's this other thing called peak power, which is kind of cool, but let's make sure that everybody's up on, on what this actually means. Um, motors do work. Work is defined as a force uh, times a distance. So in our case, we want to exert a force for 24 inches, okay? And so uh, moving it, m moving something up 24 inches did, well, 24 inches times the weight of the thing's amount of work. Now, another key component of that is, is power. Power is work over time. So you could move it super fast. You could, if you could move it instantaneously, uh, you actually, you, so where, you know, you can see if, if time is really, really small, um, you needed a whole lot of force to make that work out, and, or a whole lot of power, right? Whereas if you did it over a long period of time, like pushing a cart up a ramp, your power over time is, is less, okay? Things to keep in mind. Stall torque means you have the maximum amount of force and no RPMs. Maximum amount of force, no RPMs mean you're doing no work whatsoever. So stall torque is bad because you're not doing anything. The motor isn't turning, right? Make sense? Okay. Same thing with, with, uh, with max speed. Max speed is you're, you're turning super duper fast, but you're not actually using any mechanical torque. So the force isn't there. So work times no force, doesn't matter how fast the motor goes, you're still doing no work. So those two extremes are, are, are actually not too happy for us. And you can see that, you know, uh, you can see that green line over there, um, you know, the, 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 the power, uh, the, the max, the peak power is a trade-off between the speed and the amount of torque. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, Every motor you buy has something like this. Almost every motor you buy. And so this is a good thing to look up, all right? So, um, <laughs> so this, is, um, th this is sort of a good way of explaining what's good and what's bad about this. Um, if you are turning things, see it over here? You're being very efficient. And so this red line here is called the efficiency curve. And um, uh, generally, if you are on the happy side, which is the high speed side of peak performance, you're good because you're doing work and you're probably doing it efficiently. Meaning, and the reason that you're doing it efficiently is look, look how much current it takes to do this amount of, of power. See it right there? Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll use the, uh, the, the, we're going to borrow the power line. So 300 watts of power is being consumed right here. Or th I'm sorry, 300 watts of power is being generated or useful work is being done. And on this side of the curve, it's happy because you're, you're moving pretty good, so it's efficient. Look on the other side of the curve, you're also doing 300 watts of p work. 300 watts of work being done, but look how much amperage you're using. You're, you're, you're draining your battery, and you can see the red line is, is down there in the suck range. So it's going to suck your battery dry. So when you're looking at these, at these charts, you've got to kind of be able to decode one of these and go, well, okay, I, I believe that's the happy side. The happy side is the motor is turning relatively, is turning faster, and it's doing work in a happy way. 
The, 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 the bad side is when you're, you're over here in the battery killing space heater, heater of doom, all, you're not actually accomplishing anything, you're not actually doing a lot of work, but you're just consuming your battery. Good, make sense? All right, this, I, just a little exercise for the reader here, that's a SIM motor, right? For FRC SIM motor. Uh, anybody wanna take a crack at, it's, I, the reason I put it up here is it's way different than the other curve. So you gotta actually be able to know what these terms sort of mean because uh, the, the, each one of these motor curves is different. So, but you can see a lot of similar things. You see that power curve? It's about the same sort of shape. It's a parabola anyway. Um, and well, this one's got the speed on this axis and I can see that the, uh, the no load speed up here is about 5,500 RPM or so, or 5,310, and um, I can follow that speed all the way down here, and I can see along the, the bottom, there's that no speed maximum torque thing, and sure enough, the amount of power I'm getting out of the motor is zero. Um, and it looks like this red line could be the efficiency curve again. Um, and this line here is marked with an I. Uh, an, an I means current. Uh, is in, in amps. So once again, um, if I was to look at this thing, on this motor curve, it turns out that the happy spot is on the left, right? Does that make sense so far? Okay, let's plug in some math again. If you'll remember, our challenge is to lift this robot. It weighs 20 pounds, and we need to lift it 24 inches, and we want to do it in 10 seconds. And I thought, oh, well, okay, let us use a never rest 40 motor. Sound like a good plan. Um, it is a gearhead motor, so it's got a gearhead on it. Um, and there are, there's a motor curve up there on the Andy Mark website. So things that I can, there are things I can control and things I can't control. Um, so we're gonna start with a two inch diameter pulley. It's got a radius of one inch, okay? Um, and so, um, uh, as, as a good guesstimate, of how well this motor is gonna perform, I'm gonna use the motor curves and stuff, okay? Um, so here are the forces involved. Um, the robot weighs 320 ounces. I convert it from pounds to, to, to ounces. So the robot is pulling down because of the weight of gravity. That means that the string, since it isn't currently moving, is pulling up with 320 ounce inches, or 320 ounces of force, because they're balanced, right? It's hanging. Um, so what I need to do is I need to overcome the force of gravity. So I know that I need at least 320 ounce inches because the, my, my spool is an inch wide. And I then also need to add some force to do work. And that's what, uh, that's what this thing is trying to tell you. Now, um, for, the, this, for simplicity, we're gonna ignore it. We're gonna ignore this, this part because it turns out that it pales in comparison to this. And, and I'll show you how we're gonna get away with ignoring it here in just a sec. Okay, so are we good with that? So we, know, we think we need a torque of 320 ounce inches. Again, uh, well, so here's the motor curve that they give you for the Never Rest 40. It looks nothing like the other ones, sort of. Um, it, if I look on here, this is curved, turns out it's comparing uh, the Never Rest motor to some other motors. But the Never Rest speed, well, let's see, here's speed, right? And so, uh, at minimum torque, I must be going my fastest, so this must be the speed line, this red one coming down. And then it also tells us about the current, and the current is, well, it's headed up, because I know as I get to max torque over here, that should be it. There's no power curve on this one. Well, okay. But if I go back and look at the other ones, uh, whoop, remember this one that, it turned out that the, the the peak power turns out to be sort of a balance. It's, it's, it, for most motors, it turns out to be about half the max speed. And, the, and where that intersects with about half the max torque. Does that make sense? So that's where the stall torque and the max speed come into play. If you have no other information about the motor, pick half, um, okay? So, um, uh, well, I need 320 ounce inches just to overcome gravity, right? So if I look on the, th on the thing, I'm, I'm 320 is actually, well, it's right here. And uh, 
Well, that's in suck range. This motor won't work with a one inch pulley. Can you see it? All right. Uh, well, what can I change? I can change the diameter of the pulley. Because um, remember, torque is in ounce inches. Um, and I, I, have a, uh, I have a known, well, actually, so if I go back to my chart, and I want, I, if I wanted to like, pick what I think is the max power, let's call it 210 ounce inches right there. That's kind of where the intersection of those two lines is. So, uh, so I pick 210 ounce inches. And what R will allow me to do that? We do a little bit of math here, just simple algebra, super, super easy. Uh, so um, we, we, we know that the, the force is 320. The, the, what, solving for the radius, I get 0.65 inches. So it's about 0.131 inches in diameter. Um, that will work. So it's not two inches in diameter. I just made the pulley smaller. Make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I kind of went, well, the, the, my original calculated torque using a one inch pulley was, was 320. If you'll remember that, we figured that out because I, I need to pull with 320 ounce inches, right? That's the necessary torque. And so the motor is capable of giving me, uh, if, if, I, if I went with 320 ounce inches, that's down here. Well, that kind of sucks. So I said, well, what can the motor give me as a maximum? So I went with what I thought was where the peak power is probably is. Yep. So that's where I picked the 210. Everybody see how I did that? Half the stall torque. Yeah. OK, so, um, uh, so I ended up with this 1.31, OK? Um, well, now i got to figure out, is that actually fast enough? So the, the calculation is, um, I'm ignoring that work component because I know that I'm putting in headroom for it. But in worst case, if this motor ended up turning 60 RPM at 1.3, um, in theory, this thing will raise in six seconds. Just good old circumference of the circle pull, pull on the string. Make sense? OK. Well, is there an answer? Well, not really, because if you go back to that this thing, there's, I drew this big ellipse in there. Those are all fine values to use. So what I did is I made myself a little spreadsheet that, um, that calculates um, the, uh, how much torque, uh, how much motor torque will give me 320 ounces of motion, or, or of force. And in theory, according to the chart, how fast it should turn, I was able to turn that into times. So a half inch diameter, the motor's barely working, and it'll do it in about nine seconds. But I know that I've got some wiggle room because I needed to account for that work component. So uh, I, I said, ah, well, this one looks happy. It's, it's, uh, it's running at about 120 ounce inches of torque. I'm going to zip back to my chart again. There it is. At 120 is kind of nice up here in the green part. That makes me feel good. And I've got lots of headroom while it's still efficient to do the actual work. And because when you actually do the math for the work part, it turns out to be really small com compared to the rest of this. So uh, these are all solutions that, that would potentially work and about how much time they would take. Does that make sense? Now you can do this. Uh, I did this exact same calculation for our climber last. It was last year we had a climber, right? Yeah, yeah, last year's climber. And uh, it was actually pretty spot on when I did this math. Uh, we used, a, we used a, a sim motor and a 100 to 1 gear ratio box because we had to lift a 150 pound robot. But calculations are the same. Questions at the moment? Yeah. Ah, gearboxes. Great question. So um, in fact, <laughs> it's the next slide. Nicely done. <laughs> so uh, um, uh, in a perfect world, you, there's a perfect trade-off between um, the, the, the gear ratio and the output. And so, for example, if I took a 100 to 1, because the math is going to be easier, uh, if, I, if, if I took a 100 to 1 um, gear reduction, I get like 8,879 ounce inches of torque. Um, I forgot to put, I was going to do this 
uh, let me head back to the red line or to the, 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 the VEX motor curve again. Um, uh, the torque, which is, <laughs> you got to watch the units on this stuff. This is millinewton meters, which is a, uh, that is a, a metric unit. It's one thousandth of a newton meter. Um, so you have to do some math on that. Um, it, it turns out that um, a newton meter is about 14 ounces. Yes. Uh, oh, now I'm, 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 I'm fibbing. It's, it, uh, there's a conversion for it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, now that I, I do these calculations all the time, now I can't think of it. Um, but anyway, you, you, can, you can actually do the conversion. Um, and that's what they've done here is to convert. Um, so, but uh, we'll call it almost 9,000 ounce inches if you divide that by 16. It's a lot. Uh, make sense? Now, it's not perfect. I would multiply, I would actually reduce this to about 80% because there's friction in the gears and stuff. Make sense? All right. Um, and again, this is a guesstimate. So if you'll remember where, uh, I keep zipping around on these things, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to bias myself up here towards the happy end of this scale. And so I've got some clearance room because you can't, you know, and, and so you should be good. All right. Um, here, so a lot of times, uh, so Andy Mark, they just fixed this. Andy Mark normally puts up really good information. Last week while I was putting this presentation together, uh, it turns out that they were switching their website around. And so this is the only data sheet that they had. So I thought, oh, well, crap. Um, uh, all they've given me is the stall torque, the stall current, uh, the no load speed. And I went, oh, cool. That's actually what I need, right? Um, and, and it turns out that this is, this is a class of motor called a 775 motor. They're, they're kind of standard. And first specifies the maximum sort of ranges. The max, the max motor that, the, that, that first allows is 400 watts of power. Um, this guy maxes out at 322. Uh, the new red lines, by the way, max out at 380. Um, so that's why I went looking and found uh, I found uh, this, this curve, which is for the VEX version, the 775, and its, its specs are really close, okay? Very similar. Make sense? Yeah. Um, all right. The math here actually isn't too complicated. You didn't see any integrals. <laughs> I looked all of this stuff off of a graph, right? Uh, and I did, it's all simple, uh, eighth grade geometry sort of stuff, right? Um, but the, the, the key thing is when you get one of these motor charts, you have to actually be able to interpret it. Um, remember that motors work most best and efficient when they are turning. And so you want to be on the faster side of the power curve. That's really important, okay? Um, when in doubt, half the max speed and half the stall torque is a good guess at where the max power is. It's, it's close, it's not perfect, but it's close enough for a guesstimate. The sweet spot for you is actually half of that. So uh, I could have actually just walked up here and, and punted this whole thing and just told you this. Um, there's the rule of thumb. But I, I thought you should know why that, that exists, right? So pick a motor where the stall torque equals the amount of pull that you need times four, right? Make sense? And then, the speed that you're going to get, yeah, it's going to be about 75% of the max speed of the motor in that case. And you're going to be like plus or minus 15% on this. All right. Any other questions? Not too bad? Good, bad, indifferent? All right. Uh, well, that's it. So we will uh, uh, thank you for paying attention, and we will uh, uh, get set up for the next presenter. Okay.